There is actually some, like, funky-looking mold under there. It was discontinued in 1999, so that's the youngest this bottle could possibly be. Cool. Somehow, I'm going to put this in my mouth. All the kids are into the 90s now, right? Isn't that a thing? The Zoomers? Yeah. The Zoomers are actually into it, or am I, am I out of touch? Let's start with Kool-Aid Bursts. It feels like an udder. You ever milk a cow? Like, you're just gonna... <laughs> I don't like it. I am genuinely dreading putting this to my lips. Like, mm -hmm. I, I didn't realize how much this was gonna pain my soul until I got <laughs> here and uh, was confronted with the reality of having to drink this. a lot less sweet than I remember it being. 75% less sugar than regular soda. Whoa, it did just hit me with like that berry blue flavor, man. I was just transported to like pool parties of my youth. Instant headache too. I don't have a lot to say about that, except that it is the flavor of blue. We have two red flavors. There's Tropic Punch and Cherry. Let's try the Tropic Punch. I can't believe that anybody tricked our parents into feeding these to us. It's water with sugar in it. Maybe some dye and some flavor. This one's cherry. <laughs> I, I think it tastes a little bit like some kind of me uh, cough syrup or a medicine. You know, honestly though, if we were to try to make like a cocktail with these, they're not like punchy enough. There's not like enough flavor in the Kool-Aid bursts for them to um, to stand up to anything I could mix them with. I wouldn't even know what to do. I'm going to take this beautiful glass from Visky. I'm going to throw in two ounces of vodka, I guess. I, I genuinely can't think of another thing because they're so mildly flavored, these Kool-Aid doodads that like they're gonna disappear in the presence of just about anything you can add to a drink. I'm gonna throw in an ounce or a half an ounce of lime juice. Whatever comes out of there is fine. I'm gonna take some seltzer, make a vodka soda. The first uh, get, vodka soda on how to drink. The first vodka soda on how to drink, yeah. I'm adding cherry for starters. It's getting very red. I don't like it, but maybe. Let's just put in the whole thing. If you do a, a seltzer and two ounces of vodka and like, Half a Kool-Aid burst, you get into something that's like, sort of okay. I mean, it's still, it's not interesting. I don't think that these are that useful. I think these ones suck. I think we started in the wrong place. For your sake, I'll add other colors. It's just gonna start to look like Coca-Cola. It's not about the look. What's it about? It's making the suicide slurpee. It's about nostalgia, Greg. Where, where do we go from here, Meredith? Pepsi? Sunny D. Sunny D. Sunny D, Tangy Original. Have you changed your formula or are you still just mid-century poison? In the age-old war between Sunny D and the purple stuff, I'm going with Sunny D. Oh, wow. This is the same. It tastes like orange juice that burns the back of your throat. That's pretty cool. Look, man, I figure if you're mixing drinks with Sunny D, you're not worried about much. We're not going <laughs> for class. We're just gonna try to make a drink. I don't know how to define what I'm about to do but I know it'll be fine. We're gonna take a glass. I'm gonna take some crushed ice. I'm gonna put some crushed ice in that glass. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add an ounce of Pinnacle Whipped Cream Vodka. Mmm, uh, more like an ounce and a half of that good stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna add an ounce of regular vodka. I'm gonna add an ounce and a half, maybe two ounces of Sony D. It's just yellow. All right, let's see if that needs any help. Yeah, it's like another half an ounce of this stuff. Three quarters, it turns out. We're kind of working on an orange Julius. And if I had some half and half or something, I'd probably throw that in there to cream it up. Wait a minute. I already know what this drink is called too. We're gonna throw some rum chata in there. Cool. This drink is called, I really should not have come to this high school reunion. All right, a little bit more rum chata in there. This is make it like crazy. It's fine, it's what you'd expect. It's gross, it's real sweet. But you know, that's kind of where things have gone to because I really should not have gone to my high school reunion. That's a nice combination of flavors. A little bit more of that Sunny D action. There you go. Maybe we should call this drink a parent teacher conference. <laughs> yeah, you gotta crank up that Sunny D. Tastes like tanning oil, orange, dreamsicle. And I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's gross, sweet dessert stuff, but like that's what I would do with Sunny D. You tell me I gotta make a cocktail with Sunny D, 
I'm looking for a bottle of rum chata and something in plastic. All right, well, listen, I don't know, man. Sunny D, fucking Kool-Aid juicers. Up next, let's get into um, Orbits. I don't know, it's just staring at me right there. Here it is, Orbits. Look at this son of a bitch. A little crusty in there. There's definitely some black flex floating around. I'm not sure how well they're showing up on camera. They're tiny, but there's something in there that's not good looking. And I'm not gonna drink a lot of it. When is Orbits on the market? How old is this shit? Ooh, it's like sealed up tight. Oh, no, there we go. It smells like the mall. Like walking past Bath and Body Works in 1997. There is actually some like funky looking mold under there. It was discontinued in 1999. So that's the youngest this bottle could possibly be. Cool. Somehow I'm going to put this in my mouth. Um, let's just not die. All right, here we go. Yeah, it's funny. I think I did have this once and I was fairly disappointed with what it tasted like. It doesn't really taste like much. It's really subtle. I would not even describe it as raspberry citrus. And I'm not gonna drink any more of this. There is factually black mold rolling around in there. And uh, my wife's gonna be supremely upset with me to find out that I had this. <laughs> Look, I believe it or not, I think I can actually make like a cocktail version of Orbitz, black mold and all. I would say it's perfumey. And like, they say raspberry citrus. I mean, maybe once upon a time it was. Now it just tastes like a Bath and Body Works. It's got them bubbles in it. By chance, I happen to have a bunch of boba. I bought them for the D&D episode that we did with Matt Coville, you know, because I thought they'd be like weird fantasy ingredients. They are weird looking floating around in their little tubs. Also thinking about the fact that we said that was like kind of perfumey, we grabbed orange blossom water, and then this is cherry blossom syrup, and it does have like cherry blossom extract in it. This was purchased for the David Martinez episode where we had to make the different flavors of Nicola. Cola. So these things apparently are flavored. Wow. Those are like little explosions of passion fruit in your mouth. I am filled with hope and <laughs> inspiration. I think this is gonna go well. Let's go with gin. We're going for inspired by, not a direct reproduction of, so. Ounce and a half of gin in here. Our rose cherry blossom elixir. Do half an ounce of that. This might be a hopeless effort on this one. Oh, I think we can keep going. We're gonna add as little of an amount of um, orange blossom water as I can get away with, like a drop or two. And that's a lot. This is Bitterman's Orange Cream Citrate. I don't remember who gave it to me. I think it was a gift. I think that we can't go wrong with anything that's in this space. Four drops. I like where this is going. I wanna add a bar spoon or two of chartreuse, just one bar spoon. Uh, we did a half an ounce of our elixir, but this is pretty watery from the way it pours, so I'm gonna do another half an ounce. So what I wanna do with this now is I wanna actually put it into a mixing glass and stir it up. I'm gonna do some other weird stuff here. I'm gonna take an orange peel and I'm going to pull this and I'm gonna put this whole thing into this drink. And now I am going to stir the drink with the orange peel in it. So we stirred that up. I wanna put it back into this glass and I wanna do so without ice. Then I wanna take a goodly scoop of boba bloop, 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 and then I'm gonna make it like a fizz. We're gonna to top it up with seltzer. So what do we gotta to do to make them float more? We have to increase the density of this liquid probably a lot. So let's just try it as is. It's very orangey, but it's not bad. It's quite tasty. Let's try it with a boba. Oh, that's really cool. The boba with the drink and like the in the mouth burst and the, the pomegranate-ness of it, that's really fun. You can explode them into the straw. That's weird as fuck. If we wanted to change the density of this spirit or of this cocktail, you could add some more simple to it. I don't know if that's gonna get us there, but we could try it. It's not actually as sweet as you would think. I'm gonna do three quarters. And honestly, you can already tell it's not working because well, they're sitting on top of the sugar, so. There's just limits to what I can do on the fly with physics here. Let's see how it is really sweetened up. It tastes like an orange soda. I wonder if I've missed the mark here. It doesn't really come across as being very perfumey. All right, just one more time I wanna try this. I'm gonna see if I can make one that's not orangey. This is very orangey. I'm gonna see if I can make one that reads more floral specifically. Ounce and a half of gin. 
Uh, I lied. Two ounces of gin. Quarter ounce of St. Germain. A dash of orange blossom water. Like a couple drops, really. An ounce of our rose elixir. A quarter ounce of velvet falernum. Or, sorry, half an ounce of velvet falernum. We'll crack some ice in there. Stir that up. Pour this into that. Some seltzer, doubling the volume almost. A goodly scoop of our bobas. That's way closer to the mark. That's much more floral, for sure. That's actually really nice. The interplay between the gin and the flowery Saint Germain, maybe you could even increase that, and the rose. It really comes into focus when you add the pomegranate, whatever is going on in these goofy guys. Then it truly tastes just like a bouquet, like an explosion of flowers, you know? And it definitely tastes like the little spoons, I, I mean, close to or in the direction of the little spoonfuls I pulled out of the uh, the tainted orbits. I don't know what to call that drink. What do you call it? You said ode to orbits. I think we need a better name than that. I want to call it the dead mall. There you go. We got four things left. Let's just taste these fuckers. Yeah. So we'll start with Capri Sun. Capri Sun. What the fuck does Capri mean? So this is the Pacific Cooler. Wow, I'm glad we tasted that because that is she, whoa, baby, that's bad. It is kind of what I remember though. I sort of remember this taste. I want Doritos now so bad. Like, <laughs> which just, flavor? I want original Doritos and I want to watch Home Alone. <laughs> that tastes like, what does it taste like? Yeah, here's a visual for you. Find somebody who's been sitting on the beach all day in the 90s, covered in tanning butter. A lot of these are tanning butter flavored. But this one's watered down with their sweat. So you gotta lick it off their body after they've been in the heat all day. Oof. Yeah, squeeze it out of their body hair and uh, and put it Oof. in the garbage. That one sucks. Let's try a high C orange lava burst. I don't know what's lava about this. Okay, this is Tang. That's all this is. This is just mm. exactly the same as the Sunny D or slightly different than the Sunny D. And it's garbage, but it also doesn't make me retch. The other one was like retch inducing. So we have four flavors here. Oh, you got all four flavors. So mine was the black cherry. I think that was my favorite. Uh, well, we don't have that. We have mountain blackberry. That's what I'm thinking. We've got orchard peach. We've got wild cherry. And yeah. this is my favorite one though. I love this. It's country raspberry. Got a real Pepperidge Farm vibe, you know? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Wild cherry went all kinds of wild. Here we go, to the wildest ride in the wilderness. That's a lot sweeter than I expected it to be. I mean, like, I thought this was just gonna be flavored sparkling water. Where's the sugar content? 25 grams of sugar. Wow, that's actually kind of a lot. That vaguely reminds me of, do you remember White Rock Soda? Mm, it's yeah. like the same flavor compound, but like a less sweet variant of it. All right, so let's get into Country Raspberry. The raspberry flavorant presents less sweet with the same quantity of sugar. Mountain Blackberry. God dang these freaking golly doodly doos. Every single <laughs> one of them. Oh, that does not taste like blackberries. It might <laughs> taste like mountains. Yeah, that's like sweetened dirt. Good Lord. I'm trying to be objective about it, but like, I'm sure you could convince yourself that like, mm, that's good. I like that flavor, Black mountain blackberry. But like, if you just come at it, if I didn't tell you what that was and said, put this in your mouth, you would have a viscerally negative reaction. Oh. <laughs> Uh, which one is this? This one's Orchard Peach. The last one. Oh man, and you thought Mountain Blackberry was bad. Wow, you like these? The Wild Cherry loved it. I recognize that that is a flavor that I have been told is peach in the past, but I can't read it. Like I can't actually taste it as peach, you know? Last but not least. Let's get into it, Crystal Pepsi. Do you remember Crystal Pepsi? Oh yeah. Right now. 
I really hope it's the same recipe because I'll be really bummed if it's not. So, so what do you remember it tasting like? Citrusy. It was like Pepsi, but like, but like with some lemon added to it, and I really liked it a lot. I was into so Pepsi Crystal. I must be misremembering completely because I remember it tasting like cream soda. Well, let's find out. We're both right. It's like cream soda-ish with a note of lemon. And like floor cleaner. I'm gonna try to make this drink clear, but I don't know if I can promise to make it clear because if I add any fruit juices, we're gonna lose the clarity on it. I did find this bottle of vanilla vodka, which we must have bought when we did an episode on Flavors Vodka, and apparently I never even opened it. And the reason I wanted to have something vanilla is because I'm pretty sure cream soda is basically vanilla flavored. Let's have a shot of this. Snort. Oh, yeah, I can see that being vanilla. It's like actually surprisingly unsweet. Jesus Christ. And I got rum jam. This is an agricole rum from Mar Martinique. And please forgive my, uh, the flavor I put on the pronunciation there. It's very light. It's very bright brighter than most rum. Extremely high register, just like ah, way up here. If we're gonna make an alcoholic spirit cocktail inspired by Crystal Pepsi, this feels like my base. Let's start with an ounce and a half of rum jam. I think I wanna do half an ounce of our vanilla vodka. So currently a three to one ratio. Let's see where that lands me. Simple syrup. Half an ounce. Hmm, okay. That brings us closer to our expectation of what this should taste like. We're gonna slice a lemon doing my patented Fruit Ninja cut. Okay, so we're gonna do half an ounce of lemon and a half an ounce of lime. That's the lemon, and here comes the lime. Half an ounce of each. It's actually a little too tangy. I think we need to bring the sweetness up. I'm gonna do that by quarter ounces. Yeah, just one quarter ounce extra really kind of changed it. Cool, let's shake this sucker up. I'm gonna put it in this glass over ice. Grab a spear, okay. And then top it with seltzer. Now in practice, I would carbonate this whole drink. See absolutely no reason why we shouldn't just garnish this with some mint. Slap a straw on it and Bob's your uncle. I'm pretty happy with the way that came out. So number one, our, the drink that I have yet to name is much less sweet than the Crystal Pepsi. So there's, it's really hard to draw a direct comparison between the two, but this definitely feels directly inspired by this. And I think it's a good representation of Crystal Pepsi if Crystal Pepsi were to be made into a cocktail. The only thought I have, which I kind of forgot a moment ago, but I'm gonna try it now, is that there's a part of me that wants to just try this, and this is the kind of thing I would never do normally, but when you're workshopping, I do. Put this back into my shaker, just so I have a place to do this work, okay? So I think this might be a thing that would really take this drink to the next level, which is to take Lemon peel, spritz that in, toss it in, do two of them. Take a lime, and they don't really peel that way so good, just use like a channel. And I'm gonna try and do it in such a way that the oils spritz down into the drink. Now I'm gonna muddle those two peels into the drink. The tiny cuts on my fingers are currently on fire. Just really kinda try to get as much of those oils out into the drink. Tossing those back in there. Absolutely, that, that's what it was missing. It needs those oils. And actually it needs more lime than lemon, but we're definitely on the road there. When you're building your drink in the shaker, just get a friggin' grater, a zester, zzz, 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 do a whole lemon, do a couple rips of a lime, done. The reason I don't just do a peel and twist over the top is because I want it in the drink. I don't just want it in the nose, I want it in the drink. That really puts it into this Crystal Pepsi place. Not that it tastes like Crystal Pepsi. You can register that it's inspired by Crystal Pepsi. I think this could have more vanilla flavor, so maybe I would do equal parts between vanilla vodka and like a really light, fresh, bright rum like an agricole. Some people are probably upset that I used the rum agricole in creating this because it's like, uh, 
It's a rarefied thing. An Agricola rum is like a, mm, ooh, look at that. That's classy. It's a, it's a, ooh, from a single estate and everything. Mm. We made some drinks from 90s nostalgia stuff, maybe a little 80s nostalgia. You will find me on TikTok, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon. They are appearing down here in the bottom of the frame. I've been making this show for a really long time. And if you are new to the show and you like it, well, give it a you know, like and a subscribe. I used to say that those things don't matter. I'm not so sure anymore. I think maybe they matter. Actually, I think they might matter a lot. Anyway, here are four more things, episodes, channels, links, clickers, things for you in case you want them. Meredith, anything else you want me to do to get out of this one? That's it. Toodaloo.